you know what time of year it is it is time for the anime seasonal preview as 2022 rolls down to a close it opens up a brand new year in 2023 and you know what that means that means new year's resolutions a seasonal depression debt from christmas and new anime and my name is rs mario aka the real super mario bringing you the preview of the 2023 winter season of anime astro no all right so you made it to the must watch shows these are the must watch shows of the season these are the shows you cannot miss all right or well you can miss them if you want to but for the most part, these are the shows that I'm not going to miss this season. So, we have uh, Kaina and the Great Snow Sea. So, this one's another Polygon Studios joint. And to my knowledge, this is the first Polygon Studios po uh, project that hasn't been on Netflix. This is the first one that's going to be on Crunchyroll. So, I don't know if Crunchyroll is, like, taking shots at Netflix by picking up this project. Or if Netflix just didn't want to work with Polygon anymore and thus did not pick up this project i don't know but it's, it's polygon and they've done nothing but good work for me with the exception of maybe that godzilla trilogy <laughs> uh but in another world in an ever-growing sea of snow uh has engulfed the entire planet uh the people struggle to survive living around the roots of a massive orbital tree whose branches spread into the celestial membrane high above the ground uh, change comes to this to this dying world after Kaina, a boy from the celestial membrane, encounters a girl from the surface named Riha. 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 Okay. Again, show looks good, sounds good, adventure fantasy sci-fi. Lego. そろそろ始まりますね。これが目標超大型兵器。速やかな配置の推奨。カミーアオートマタバージョン 1.1 so, uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, A1 Pictures is doing a near automata, uh, you know, anime adaptation. Uh, so this one's interesting. I mean, now again, I haven't played the near automata games, but I've heard nothing but good things about them. Not to mention, I've seen that there's a great deal of porn about this story. Uh, so of course I'm going to check this out. I don't know if this is the best place to come into the story. Kind of like, you know, uh, Legend of Heroes before it, back in, earlier in the list. But I'm, I'm going to check it out, though. You know what I'm saying? In the distant future of, fi of 5012, the sudden aerial invasion of Earth by aliens. Did you just say aliens? <laughs> is, what is this like? Is this Was this done on purpose? Like, okay. Uh, and their creations, machine life forms. Okay. Uh, led mankind to the brink of extinction. Uh, the surviving number of humans that took refuge on the moon to, to organize a counterattack using androids. <laughs> the soldiers to recapture Earth. However, the war reaches a stalemate as machine life forms continue to multiply in infinitely. In return, humanity deploys a new unit of android soldiers as an ultimate weapon, the Yoriha. <laughs> the names uh, are newly dispatched to Earth 2B joins 9S, the analysts currently stationed there, where, um, where amid their mission, they encounter a myriad of mysterious phenomena. 
this story this is the story of these lifeless androids and their endless fight for the sake of mankind so basically it seems like the story of like maybe the first game i think there are like two of these games so uh, uh so far this might be the best place to come into the near automata story ジェノクの豪華に焼かれるフォーランド。Alright, so this is probably one of the biggest, like, new or original shows this season. High Card. Alright, I have heard some things about this project that seem to be very interesting. Alright, but I have no idea who Studio Habari is. Like, uh... Yeah, they've made nothing I've ever watched before. Oh, wait a minute, they made the Tekken show. Okay, so they made the Tekken show for Netflix. Which I also haven't watched, but I know what that is, though. So, um, yeah. So, oh, 1988? Good Lord, this studio is old. All right, so let's check this out then. So, after discovering uh, that his orphanage is on the brink of closure due to financial stress, Finn, who was living freely on the streets, set out for a casino with the aim of making a fortune. However, nothing could have prepared Finn for the nightmare that was waiting for him. Once there, Finn encountered a car chase, a bloody shootout caused by a, a man's lucky card. Finn, is eventually, uh, Finn will eventually learn that the shootout was about the world order. The world order can be controlled by set of now listen to this all right now sometimes i think i might be a little dyslexic but look the world order can be controlled by a set of the world order <laughs> can be controlled by and i'm sitting here my brain is like why does that not sound like the right why does that not sound right and i'm sitting here trying to think is it me no it's just the way the sentence was written the world order can be controlled by a set of 52 X playing cards with the power to bestow different superhuman abilities, uh, superhuman powers and abilities to the ones that possess them. With these cards, people can access the hidden power of Buddy that can be found within themselves. That's a stupid name for a power. I'm just not gonna lie. There are a secret group of players called High Card who have been directly ordered by the King of Foreland to collect the, the, the cards that have been scattered throughout the kingdom. A frenzied battle amongst these card obsessed players, fueled by justice, desire, and revenge, is about to begin. Good lord, that was just, who writes these descriptions, man? Good lord, man. So far, though, the show does look interesting. Like, I mean, it's got, like, actions, like, supernatural stuff here. There seems to be, like, some kind of gambling business subterfuge thing. So far, it's got a lot of good elements to it.砂漠しかないこの星で人類に必要なあらゆる物質をゼロから生み出す生態動力炉。プラントは新しく作ることはできない。だからどの町も厳重に管理している。返してもらう。あれは俺のものだ。いや、俺たちのか。プラントは奪
So we don't really need to say anything about Trike and Stampede, especially since they didn't give me a synopsis to read. But essentially, Trigon Stampede is a remake of the original Trigon show from back in like the early 90s. I guess early 90s for America, but late 80s. So if you watched anime back then, you know what Trigon is. Like, no, this is not Machine Gun Kelly. It's Trigon. All right. And he's worth like a billion double dollars. I'm just gonna tell you this. This is all I'm gonna tell you, okay? Do you see the picture of these beautiful baby polar bears, right? All right, you see those pictures? All right, now, Vinland Saga is on Netflix right now in dub. All right, go watch Vinland Saga. If you go watch Vinland Saga, you'll be ready for Vinland Saga season two. You know what I'm saying? Because Vinland Saga is awesome. You know what I'm saying? It's a his historical Sadin action drama. That's amazing. Okay. So go ahead and watch it right now. If you watch it right now, that's what's up. You know what I'm saying? If you don't, I will personally leave my house and fly to the Arctic and kill this baby polar bear. I will kill him with my bare hands if you don't watch Vinland Saga. All right. I'm just saying. It's up to you. Do you want to see a polar bear die? Then don't watch Vinland Saga. If you don't want to see a polar bear die, watch Vinland Saga on Netflix or Crunchyroll. Well, I think that the dub is on Netflix for season one. You know what I'm saying? But honestly, Vinland Saga is amazing. I did a video about season one you can check out in the card. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, you have no reason to not check out Vinland Saga now. ここは人間族の村敵地の真っただ中私マリーカと言いますドリエルさんには冒険者をやっていただきたいつとまんのかよこんなおっさんにそのハンマー鉄製ですよねマ族とバレたら殺されるな俺を必要としてくれる場所があ
Niko Mono Tachi no Yuro, you know, <laughs> which uh, I think is, is going to be kind of interesting. So a demon by her side is her salvation. The girl by his side is his pastime. Their encounter with the late 19th century British Empire begins a tale of search for some place to belong. And, their, and, and to their fellow outcasts, this demon and girl whisper their fate in the dark of night. Like, I think this is interesting, even though, like, I don't know, somebody decided to write a haku as a description of this show, but the story itself seems pretty interesting. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, 19th, 19th century uh, uh, British Empire, you know, and them trying to kind of escape this all seems pretty interesting. You know what I'm saying? And you know I'm all down for fantasy and I'm all down for shonen. All right, some more ecchi in the building. So this one, I'm not 100% sure about because it is a short, and I don't usually do shorts in this list. I mean, sometimes shorts are good, specifically when they're comedy shorts, but, you know, it, it is what it is. I think this one's going to be on high dive, so, you know what I'm saying? I'll give it a shot, you know what I'm saying? If it's not that funny, eh. But it is etchy though, so if it's not funny, you can still stay for the waifus. Uh, so basically, it's my life as in in, in Inu Inukai's. My life is Inukai-san's dog, you know. So they say every dog has his day. That's especially true for our protagonist, who just turned into a dog and now lives every day under the care of his crush. Uh, Inukai-san. She happily dotes over her new companion, and while he wants to return to being human someday, there's something wonderful about being cared for by the person he loves. So basically, <laughs> he is living the Coomer life. Like, he's, he's a dog, but he's being taken care of by his waifu crush. I, I think this is gonna be funny. <laughs> Alright, so we got our we got our uh, our first video game adaptation. So we have Legend of Heroes, Trials of Cold Steel, The Northern War. Now I've never played a Legend of Heroes game. I'll be honest. Now from what I hear, I believe this is a strategy game, like something similar to Fire Emblem. Uh, but it's mo it's more modern. It's not like medieval Europe. So sounds interesting enough. Um, but uh, an anime about it though, I'll, I'll give that I'll give it a shot. You know, I don't know if this is the right place to come into the trials, uh, like the 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 um, you know the Legend of Heroes story. But hey, you know what I'm saying. So in the Septian calendar year 1205. Lavi was born in North Umbria, the poorest region in Northwest Zamuria. Okay, she enlists in the Northern Jaegers, uh, the largest in the, the largest in the continent, to protect her homeland, her hometown, and distinguish herself from her grandfather Vlad, who once was a hero but betrayed North Umbria. Oh, okay, so she's doing that kind of deal. <clears throat> Go away, Avast. What do you want from me? Uh, her devotion to her mission often earns her violations of regulations. Wait a minute, what? Her her devotion to her missions often earn often earn her earns her violations of regulations. So she's one of those people that's so by the book sometimes that it screws up the mission for her or Maybe she goes off script sometime to complete her mission. I don't know. That that's interesting. So a day or a, a and one day she is ordered to assemble a platoon with Martin Azaria and oh my gosh, <laughs> Martin Azaria and Talion or Talon Talion for an impossible spy mission in Embori in Embori. Whoa, these names I hate them. Er. 
Bonia <laughs> to gather information on the Imperial hero, a mysterious threat to Northumbria. So, I mean, everything about this show seems good. Like, Tetsunoko Productions does pretty good. Uh, the story sounds interesting. All right, it's got like fantasy elements, but it's got like this modern military thing going. You know what I'm saying? You know what? And not to mention, it actually looks good. I actually almost bumped this one up to Dark Horse, but you know, I I'll give it a I'll give it a chance though. <laughs> All right, now we back to our fantasy grind with uh, with Artist No Kyoju or Giant Beast of Ours. So of ours, <laughs> the great beasts created the land, but humans stole it. Angered, the beasts began eating humans, who in turn called upon the gods to fight the beasts. In the age of the sword, heroes and mythology grant giant beasts are hunted by humans for profit. Juro, who makes a living hunting beast, encounters Kumi, who is being chased by someone. Then is this a beast or is a regular person? And in that moment, decides to save her as rumors spread regarding humanity in a mysterious experiment. Together, they seek to discover the world's secrets. So somebody is doing something dirty. And you know what I'm saying? All these people get caught up in it. And it also has the backdrop of hunting monsters and saving the world. So all of this has all the elements of something that could be a really good show. All right, because I, I mean, I'm again, you look at something good like 86, and 86, like, oh, it's it's mechas and it's a mecha war, and but on the but all that is a backdrop for like political intrigue and like race relations and all this other stuff like class warfare. It's like a backdrop for a whole lot more. That's what I'm getting from this show. I'm not going to say this show is going to be the next freaking 86, but I'm getting them vibes though. So we back at it again with Junji Ito uh, 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 freaking adaptations. So the last time we had one of these was some years ago and it was very mid. I, I, some of them I liked, some of them I didn't, but we got another 20, uh, uh, ad another adaptation of 20 Junji Ito short stories. And this time is going to be done by Studio Dean and Netflix. So that's going to be interesting. All right. So that means they can do pretty much whatever they want because they're working with Netflix. Let's see what Studio Dean does. So you made it to the Dark Horses. So these are the shows that I think are going to be pretty good this year. Like the other shows I was talking about, <clears throat> I give those shows a chance. You know what I'm saying? But there's a chance that, that they're probably not going to be that good. These shows, though, these are the Dark Horse. So these could be the best show of the season, or it could be mid, or it could be the worst show. We don't know. They're Dark Horse shows. All right. So we're going to start off with... Hikari no, Hikari no O, <laughs> uh, otherwise known as the Fire Hunter. So, um, outside the magical barriers lies a world overrun by fiery beasts known as flame demons. The only ones who can protect humanity from the flame heat from the are the flame hunters. In the dark woods where the beasts roam is where Toko, a young villager, is res is rescued from attack by one of these skilled trackers and a new destiny begins so 
basically kind of like just Attack on Titan ish. Oh, outside the walls there be monsters type of anime, and there's some destiny that the main character has to fulfill, probably outside the walls. But the show looks really good. All right, and Signal MD, uh, I I feel like I've seen something from them before, um, so we'll see, we'll see how this works out. Spy Classroom. All right, so this one kind of an interesting one. Yet another high dive show. I feel like I'm gonna have to get high dive now because they they just high dive is just spending money this season. All right, so um, conflict ravaged nations now deploy covert operatives instead of missiles. Lily is recruited into spy training, but her practical skills are absolutely abysmal. Despite, I mean, desperate to pass, she leaps at the chance to join the mysterious Tomo, Tomo, Tomo Shibi team. But, I mean, uh, too bad the team is filled with even more hopeless spies. So basically, she, she tries to get on this team, and the team is full of a bunch of bums like her. Wow. <laughs> together they must secure, uh, to, together they must conquer the impassable mission uh, and best of their genius instructor. But the true purpose behind their classroom is more harrowing than they can imagine. So there's some dark secret with this. There's also romance here. So I'm like, is this going to be like some like, uh, are we going to get some like, Yuri type of stuff here because I, I don't see any dudes in the poster so you know I if if if, if it's boring at least we at least we got lesbians <laughs> spy lesbians you can't go wrong with spy lesbians Oh, speaking of bums, uh, we have <laughs> Ningen Fushin, adventurers who don't believe in humanity uh, will save the world. So basically, a bunch of people with low self-esteem are going to save the world. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, they keep making shows about my life. Like, leave me alone, Japan. Like, dang, first you made a show about a, 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 a unemployed dude in his 30s, and now you're making a show about somebody who's got low self-esteem. What did I do to you, Japan? Like, <laughs> uh, the city of Turini, uh, in the holy kingdom of Dinez, is a melting pot of races and professions. Adventurers looking to get rich quick uh quick-witted merchants singing dancers and bards nobles holy men beast folk and the like uh the town itself is a labyrinth is so labyrinthian that it has been nicknamed the labyrinth town nick a heartbroken light warrior who is who has been kicked out of the martial arts adventuring party and deceived by his lover uh in in this in this resident city Okay, so far we've got like kicked out of, of like the guild that trope is in here. We have big epic fantasy world with fantasy creatures. That's another trope. And now we have oh deceived by his lover. So that's three modern fantasy anime tropes we have already. And we only we only just read the synopsis for this one. Uh, fed up with everything, he visits a bar only to find bad food, adventurers living it up, and uninteresting table mates. As he drowns his sorrows in lukewarm beer, ew, it's not good. Uh, and uh, all his all all of his irritation and discontent bursts forth in one direction: humans can't be trusted. He thought he was only voicing his frustration, but in reality, the statement came from four voices. 
Thus begins the adventure of four people who each carry their own scars. So basically, a bunch of emotionally damaged bums will save the world. Sounds like my kind of story. ここから見極める。こちらが神を置くことのできるつくもがみというものが本当にいるかどうか。物語を抱いて。なぜつくもがみがつくもがみを狩る彼らは才能代行であり同族狩りだ守れ Filled with rage against spirits known as Sukumagami, Kanato Hiyoma、uh, is sent to live with Nagasuki Botan to help him see a different side. Alright, though both are part of the bo- both are part of a, of a clan that returns spirits back to their world with divine powers, their experiences with otherworldly vessels are vastly different. Kunado robbed of a loved one and Nagasuki saved by them. Can she get through to him? So basically, he's like this hardened lost warrior and she's trying to bring him back. I got a feeling there's gonna be a romance here, but the show looked really cool. Thus, why it made the list. So, no one in Kinka each man, he keeps on this. Sadaki no Sata. What does that you got? Finally, we got a historical show. You know me, I- I'm all down for historical shows.、Uh, Ravager, so, or、uh, Revenger, actually. So, a master assassin, Yusui Yuen, looks into a series of assassinations made on the Grand Samurai clan, the Setsuma. He encounters Kurumi Raizo, a member of the survivor,、uh, and survivor of one of the attacks. Together, they discover the nature, the true nature of these murders is bigger than over stolen resources. As they get closer to the truth, they will, will they come out alive to extract revenge? So basically, some intrigue, some historical intrigue, samurai action. I'm all for that. Like, that's what's up. 